The United States Military Academy at West Point, New York, has a long tradition of each cadet participating in a strenuous and vigorous competitive athletic environment. This experience is felt to contribute to the qualities of leadership, quickness of decision, promptness of action, mental and physical coordination, aggressiveness and courage. These tangible benefits seem to outweigh the risks involved, especially when there is an active program to minimize the athletic injuries. We have had frequent requests for information regarding our injury prevention program. It has continued to improve over the years and we hope it will continue to do so. The purpose of this film is to share with you an actively functioning injury prevention program. It shows where we stand today and in which direction we are headed. The prevention of injuries to the athlete cannot and should not be the sole responsibility of one individual in an organized athletic setting. The physician, therapist, trainer, coach, and physical educator work and communicate together in our setting. Each contributes their skills to the overall objective of the program. This film is not a comprehensive review of the subject of injury prevention in the athlete, but it portrays the general areas that we have concentrated on to minimize and reduce the disability and time lost resulting from athletic injuries in our population. Regardless of skill levels, conditioning, instruction, experience, and safety measures, there will always be an element of risk in athletic activities. This young athlete overestimated his skill and experience in making a turn. Judgment and cooperation of the individual are important factors in any injury prevention program. Those responsible for the care of athletes must be prepared to deal with the unexpected. One may suddenly be called upon to care for something as unusual as a head injury in basketball. These two wrestlers are superbly conditioned and possess excellent skills, but such traits do not always prevent an unexpected injury. Some of the rules of sporting events are designed to prevent serious injuries. However, they did not benefit this punter. The collection of injuries just shown represent unusual occurrences. Our attempt to reduce athletic injuries has raised certain theoretical questions. Are there traits in joint structure and motion that predispose or protect the athlete from sustaining an injury? We are presently evaluating several parameters with the objective of establishing a screening profile to counsel athletes into sports in which their traits would be protective rather than potentially detrimental. Elbow hyperextension is one of the parameters of laxity being studied in our population. Does this predispose one to such injuries as elbow dislocations or recurrent sprains? Being able to supinate the wrist beyond the horizontal plane in this position is a summation of motion involving the shoulder, elbow, and wrist. We are particularly interested in the shoulder subluxator and dislocator as well as other shoulder girdle injuries. Is it more significant in terms of injury prevention to be loose or tight in shoulder rotation? Range of motion of the shoulder is variable among athletes of the same age and the extremes of rotation decrease with age. We are looking at external rotation as well as internal rotation as shown in these positions. External and internal rotation of the lower extremities is, once again, the summation of joint motion. How important is the distribution of this motion among several joints, as opposed to an increased amount of rotation in one joint? In this position, a certain number of young men can passively have their tibial tubercle externally rotated beyond the lateral border of the patella. We are looking at this laxity parameters relation to chondromalacia and ligament injury and to see if these athletes develop subsequent rotatory instability with a greater frequency following ligamentous injury. The significance of being able to hyperextend the knee is being studied in our population as well as the significance of tight heel cords in ankle and other lower extremity injuries. Foot structure varies significantly among athletes. We are interested in seeing if a flat foot protects or contributes to ankle injuries or shin splints. 
We have raised several unanswered questions in the area of predisposition of an athlete to injury and are actively looking for parameters in our population to develop an injury prevention screening profile. Moving from the theoretical to what has been a more practical screening program, our efforts are directed toward the prevention of re-injury. Before any cadet with a previous injury is allowed to participate in a contact sport, he is individually evaluated by the trainer to establish whether motion and power of the entire injured extremity has been restored. For example, in the knee, medial and lateral as well as anterior and posterior laxity is documented. The passive excursion of the tibial tubercle in relation to the lateral border of the patella is compared to the uninjured knee. It is important in the athlete to check for residual contractures at the extremes of motion. The ability to hop symmetrically on alternate extremities is a good screening evaluation to evaluate residuals of the previous injury. Weakness in the lower extremity is often found following an injury in which the rehabilitation has not been complete. This isometric knee device is used to screen for extension strength of the knee in different points of the arc. One must also look at the flexors, AB ductors, AD ductors, and rotators of the entire extremity. An extremity that has not regained strength in all these motion parameters to within 10% of the uninvolved extremity is more susceptible to re-injury. Besides adequate attention to rehabilitation of the injured extremity, maintaining overall body conditioning is particularly important in the athlete. Our reconditioning program includes an individualized program of exercise which is supervised during the recovery from injury. Most of the activity is designed to maintain those muscle groups not involved in the injury and continue endurance activities for cardiopulmonary conditioning. The injured extremity is included in the workout routine as directed by the physician involved. This program assures daily supervision of the recovery phase by some member of the athletic injury prevention team. We have established endpoints for the different athletic injuries as defined by each member of the team. The cadet must satisfy the medical staff that he is healed, the therapist that motion and power have been regained in the entire extremity, and the trainer that agility, endurance, and conditioning are complete. The cadet then returns to full unrestricted activity after a graded recovery in what we feel is maximum rehabilitation and is a strong step toward the prevention of re-injury. Occasionally, even after the rehabilitation, the extremity may show certain joint instability and the injury prevention team will restrict the cadet from certain specific activities. Personalized instruction is advantageous as shown in this required wrestling activity. Each cadet wears a protective mouth guard and is placed in classes by weight. Each day his class begins with a warm-up and stretching, an instruction phase, and finally, supervised competition. The relatively small class size and closely supervised competition has kept our injuries to a minimum in such required classes as wrestling, boxing, gymnastics, and swimming. General conditioning on a year-round basis is something we strive to achieve in our athletes at the academy. A specific sport requires individualized conditioning, but a personal program is encouraged to maintain endurance activities between seasons. The ability to prolong the onset of the effects of fatigue during competition is important in injury prevention. Besides conditioning, we provide instruction in the training effects of adequate sleep, relaxation periods, weight control, and eating habits to help the young athlete achieve his potential. Hopefully, these factors will be beneficial to his health and prolong his athletic enjoyment as he grows older. Good and individually fitted protective equipment is important in injury prevention in many sports and is essential, especially in football. The fitting of the helmet shoulder complex illustrates several aspects of equipment fitting one must look at the equipment as a unit. For example, the helmet and shoulder pads should fit individually, 
but are also fitted with reference to neck motion. The size, length, and strength of necks varies greatly. A neck collar may be felt to be needed in some individuals to limit extremes of neck motion in an attempt to prevent an injury. The athlete should be educated and understand what protection the equipment offers him and be able to tell when it is defective or not fitting properly. Maintenance and fitting of equipment requires cooperation of the athlete and supervision. This is particularly important in the helmet suspension system. Variables in equipment construction, as well as the neck and shoulder structure of the athlete, make the correct fitting of equipment an essential part of injury prevention. An ankle injury will be used to illustrate our approach to the care of an athletic injury. A few simple sideline screening tests are used to make the decision if the athlete can continue participation. Inability to toe rise and support the body weight on the injured ankle indicates a significant injury. In our athletes, 85% of ankle sprains involve primarily the anterolateral structures of the ankle joint. Besides defining the area of soft tissue injury, the sideline examination should check for bony deformity and tenderness and attempt to establish if mortise stability is present. Further evaluation includes appropriate retinographic studies. Each injury is then classified as mild, moderate, or severe. Immediate ice, wrap, elevation, and crutches are all used to minimize the initial swelling. After the injury has stabilized, we direct our attention to the reduction of swelling and the reestablishment of joint motion in a supervised rehabilitation setting. Reestablishment of motion is slow initially and progresses to graded weight bearing once progress has been demonstrated against resistance. All our rehabilitation programs emphasize not forcing joint motion in the presence of pain or effusion. The early phase of recovery entails restrictions on activity with an ankle wrap to help control dependent swelling. When the athlete has full ankle motion, is able to walk without a limp, is able to toe rise, he progresses to the final phase of his rehabilitation. He then practices and performs activities he will need in his return to competitive athletics. Before being released to full activity, he must demonstrate the ability to hop symmetrically on his injured extremity, accelerate without a limp, and run a diminishing figure eight without favoring his ankle. The end point of his ankle rehabilitation is full strength and motion, agility and lateral movement of the injured extremity, and the maintenance of total body conditioning. The comprehensive physical conditioning program in which all cadets participate is very demanding of the muscles of the shoulder girdle and the shoulder joint itself. Although we see initial shoulder injuries, Many are aggravations of previous shoulder injuries sustained prior to entering the military academy. Certain of the cadets are able to meet all of the requirements with modifications of the stresses applied on each shoulder. When identified as a potential problem, the cadet is taught to participate within his functional range of motion, protecting his susceptible joint. This usually means avoiding the extremes of abduction and external rotation. If his problem is only in one sport, he can be assisted by restrictive devices or be excused from the individual activity. The overhead ladder is a difficult event for an athlete with a subluxating shoulder. A small number of our athletes require surgical repair for shoulders that do not respond to therapy and restrict the athlete significantly in several events. Following a repair, most of the young men return to full unrestricted activity after careful and supervised comprehensive shoulder rehabilitation. Our rehabilitation of the shoulder is similar to our approach to other joint injuries. The entire musculature of motion and stabilization of the joint is rehabilitated. Special attention is directed to the internal rotators, but all the shoulder muscles are strengthened and full motion is regained. During the concentrated work on the shoulder, conditioning of the entire body is maintained. 
This soccer player represents an example of an athletic injury with residual joint laxity. He ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament and subsequently developed a positive anterior drawer test during the three years prior to this film. The degree of drawing of the tibia is decreased in internal rotation and in external rotation. He has a tight knee in terms of passive external rotation of his tibial tubercle. He has completed several successful soccer seasons and his knee functions well for several reasons. He had a tight knee prior to his ligament injury in terms of rotation. He has primarily anterior instability with very little rotatory component. He has had maximum rehabilitation. He has avoided significant re-injury. He has outstanding coordination, adaptability, and desire to perform. Effective methods of injury prevention for the athlete is an area of study still in its infancy. We feel strongly that the strides we have made at West Point have been enhanced by our team approach to this problem. The interdisciplinary education and communication between the physician, the therapist, the trainer, and the physical educator have added to the effectiveness of our overall program. We are actively searching for parameters of joint structure and laxity that may protect from or contribute to the occurrence of injuries. This includes individual variations in structure that may alter the disability following an injury. Once an injury has occurred, prevention of re-injury becomes the goal. Early and adequate treatment with a definite endpoint to recovery is an important step in shortening the time lost and preventing re-injury. Individual screening of previous injuries prior to competition assures that full recovery has occurred. This injury screening has reduced re-injuries in our population. The concept of rehabilitation of an athletic injury includes the regaining of strength, motion, agility, and endurance. The athlete must maintain conditioning in the uninjured muscle group as well as regaining the function of the entire injured extremity. Personalized instruction, supervised competition, general and specialized conditioning, as well as individual fitting of equipment are important injury prevention factors. First aid and availability of emergency services should be well established prior to the occurrence of an unexpected injury. Injuries will incur in spite of efforts and should represent the minimized element of risk. We feel one of the best insurance plans an athlete can have is to participate where an actively functioning injury prevention program exists. 